Hey everybody, in this video I wanted to talk about the PlayStation Store Essential Games Sale. There's 1400 items on sale. I don't believe there are 1400 Essential Games, but I did sift through that and I picked out 10 and then I felt the video was too long so I cut my list of 10 down to a list of 5 and I would like to talk about those 5 games with you today. Um, please let me know what you think. Um, happy to have some friendly discussion in the comments. These are some of my favorite games of all time and a couple that are just good fun. Alright, the first game I'd like to talk about in today's video is going to be Pyre. In this game you take control of a character called the Reader and your job is to lead a band of exiles to salvation basically or freedom or both depending on how you play the game. You're down in a prison of sorts. People um, of all walks of life that have committed heinous crimes are put down here. And there is this game that they can play in order to win their freedom and get a second chance at a normal life. And I don't know what the exact name of the game is called, but it's a take on rugby. And the footage you're seeing in the background of the video there is what predominantly the only gameplay of the game is. There's a bunch of narrative stuff, which we'll get to, but in terms of doing things, that's the game. So if that doesn't look exciting to you, you may not like Pyre. But you control three characters. You can only control one guy at a time, which is why the other two just kind of stand there confused. The objective is to take that ball and either throw it into the opponent's pyre or carry it in there yourself in a sort of martyrdom sense. If you do that, or if an enemy player kills one of your characters, they go on a death timer. I think it's somewhere between like 8 and 12 seconds. I think it depends on the character. Um, and there are three different sizes of character we'll say there's the big guys medium guys and small guys and it's similar to what you would think the big guys are really strong and really slow and the smallest guys are really fast but really weak and they die quickly um you score more points i believe by dunking with the small guys versus the big guys because it's harder to get them all the way to the opponent's pyre but the reason I wanted to shout this game out and most of the games on this list really is I feel like a lot of them didn't get the attention that they deserved. Pyre especially I think it's crapped on because of the weird sports ball mechanic inside of it. But there's also a really deep story that's told in these comic book kind of panels. Like I'd mentioned earlier, you're going to interact with your your team, your squad of prisoners, you're going to get their backstories, you're going to find out why they're down there, and you're going to grow close to these characters. And as you progress in the story and you play through these tournaments, the prize is you get to let one of your people go. And that means they're gone. They get to ascend back up and have their second shot at life, but in doing so, you don't get to speak to them anymore, you don't ever get to see them again, and they're not on your team. So there's a balancing act there. Who do you think deserves to go, or do you hold them back one more season because they're your star player, and you need that character? You can't afford to let them go just yet. Pyre is a game that has stuck with me in terms of a game that I like to recommend, for years and years. I immediately fell in love with it. I find the rugby gameplay super addictive. The story was heart-wrenching, heart-gripping, and just it's the, it's the total package. So I would say give it a shot even if the sports ball game does not look that fun to you. This game is worth it for the story. The rugby game will grow on you and you'll be happy that you gave this game a chance. And my hope is that you enjoy it 
as much as I did all those years ago. The next game I have for you is Other Side. This is an atmospheric tactical RPG similar to XCOM. Uh, in this game, you control daughters. These daughters are born of a character in the game called the Red Mother. You first start out with three different ones. There's a shield and spear, one with two pistols, and one with a sword. Always bring one with the pistols. Uh, learn how to use the interrupting shot with her. You will thank me later. You're going to use those three different classes of daughters to manipulate a battle gauge in the top right corner that's going to be the turn order. You want to be interrupting and accelerating your daughters so they have more turns than the enemy, so you're doing more damage, taking less damage, and getting through these levels quickly and efficiently. The story in Other Side is pretty interesting. It's drip-fed, similar to a From Software game. What you get in the beginning is the Red Mother is trying to stop the world from a supernatural force called the Suffering, and she fails. She is mortally wounded, and she takes her power and creates the daughters that you control in the game. As you progress through the game and kill the bosses, the game's gonna give you more and more of the story. The main bad guy in this game is called the child, who is a child, a warp twisted evil child. And as you kill these bosses, you will learn why he became that way. The Red Mother's goal is to save this child because she doesn't think he's evil. I think one of the problems Other Side had when it came out was the difficulty. This game has permadeath in it, and it's still there, but they've addressed this. In the base game, before the patches, when your daughters were injured, the only way to heal them was by sacrificing another daughter to the injured daughter, which resulted in the sacrificed daughter being permanently out of your run. And the way that this game works is similar to a roguelite. You start at the beginning of the game and you're fighting through a gauntlet of bosses and you need to get as far as you can and it's not expected that you win your first time you will fail and you'll be stronger for it but circling back to the sacrifice you sacrifice the daughters they will inherit some of the traits um, but the other daughter is dead when you start a new run you'll gain these tokens which allow you to bring some of your daughters from prior runs back to life so as you add sacrifice daughter stats to your other daughters, they are just getting stronger and stronger, and you're building an army of unstoppable killing machines by the end of this game. So how did the patches fix this? They kept the permadeath mechanic because adding stats to your daughters is still integral, but you can rest. You had to rest in the base game as well, but resting now, if you so choose, will heal your daughters. So if you're playing semi-smartly, you can get through the whole game without sacrificing any daughters unless you needed to or wanted to for the stats they will gain from the daughter that you're giving up. I do wish this was here at the beginning of the game. I understand why it wasn't, because the design choices were for this game to be difficult and to be about sacrifice and to make you feel things, to make you care about your daughters. And you still will, but having this easier mode from the start i think would have helped the commercial success overall for this game i don't want to ramble on about this game too much it's worth playing and if nothing that i've said up until this point interests you then how about this in the game you control a bunch of hot waifu goth girls that you can get overly attached to customize their looks and then cry when you have to kill them to save the other ones. Whether you're more in favor of all the stuff I said leading up to that, or you want the hot goth waifus, please do yourself a favor and check this one out. All right, following that, I would like to talk about Graveyard Keeper. This is a game exactly like Harvest Moon, but instead of taking care of a farm, you are burying corpses in a graveyard. And instead of cooking delicious meals, you are harvesting flesh off of <laughs> corpses and making hamburgers to sell to the townsfolk. It sounds much more morbid than it is. It's very, very dark with its humor, but it takes itself very, very lightly. Um, the corpses are delivered to you via talking donkey. And there is a talking skull that you will dig up early on in the game that 
acts as your tutorial and uh, long-term companion in the game. Graveyard Keeper, if you couldn't tell by that brief summary, is a very silly game. It is very much like Harvest Moon, just completely different at the same time. It's going to be familiar in that you'll be waking up each day with some chores, and a timer of sorts because the corpses, they do start to decay and you do have a time limit on how quickly you get them processed and into the ground. There's a whole system based around your graveyard's appeal. You can do different things to the bodies, swap out organs for better organs, put in different headstones, different fencing, dress it up. You wanna raise your grave your um, your cemetery's level so that the church will give you more money and more perks so you can progress the game. The story starts out with you crossing the street, going to visit your girlfriend, you're struck by a car and suddenly find yourself in a completely different world and you are the graveyard keeper. The game doesn't give you much more than that. I put a good 50 hours into this game. I have not finished it just yet. Like I said, I'm 50 hours into this game and if I don't go back to it, I'm okay with it. I am a bit of a completionist and I would love to have the platinum trophy in this game eventually, but it is getting very grindy. But some people really like that grind. And if that's you, then this game will be right up your alley. I do like that grind. There's just so many games in my backlog that if I don't pick this back up for the few dollars that I paid for this, I've gotten more than my fair share of enjoyment out of. It's a great game. You will lose days to this one. So proceed with caution, but do proceed. It's worth your time. The next one is the Sword of Ditto, Mormo's Curse. This one is just a very light-hearted game. Yeah, you can play it by yourself, or it does have couch co-op. It's a rogue light dungeon crawler, hack and slash, top-down, similar to old Zelda games on like the Super Nintendo. You're gonna explore dungeons, get these gigantic toy weapons. There's, for example, there is a gigantic oversized golf club. There's one called The Foot, where a big foot just comes down and stomps your enemies. There's a bowling ball, and quite a few more. These are going to be used offensively as well as in a puzzle-solving capacity for the dungeons. What you're doing in this game is trying to stop Mormo and her curse from repeating itself. If you fail, your character will die and there will be a statue erected in town. And depending on your previous run, the town will either be in a good state or a bad state. I think it's every 100 years this curse happens and it just keeps cycling. And you keep rising up a new sort of ditto to try and stop the cycle. And you do this, like I said, by exploring dungeons. I think there's maybe four, I don't quite remember anymore that you will quest your way through. Each one that you clear will make the final boss easier, but you are on a time limit. I believe you have three in-game days and then you have to go fight the boss or you may just lose. It has been a while on this one for me, but it is a good bit of fun. Ultimately, anything that has co-op has a soft spot in my heart because I feel like, especially couch co-op, such a thing of the past so i'm always excited when a game can add that this one is just easy to pick up easy to put down you don't need to really remember what happened in the prior session because of the rogue lightness of it you just go through have fun beat stuff up you win you lose it doesn't matter try again next time so definitely check this one out another one that i think a lot of people didn't play but this one is published by Devolver Digital, and they have some of the best taste in video games, at least as far as I'm concerned. Okay, for Supergiant's second appearance in this video, we have Transistor. This is an action RPG. Uh, it's set in a futuristic city. This is called Cloudbank. 
um, you take control of a character called Red, and she's wielding a gigantic sword, also called the Transistor. Uh, Red is on a journey to figure out what happened in the city because everyone is gone. You wake up with a talking sword next to you and no idea what's going on. The game combines real-time combat with strategic planning, which means you can pause the action at any point and you input uh, your next moves, basically. Um, but you don't just say, I want to you know, swing the sword next. You actually plot Red's course, her motion. You say, you know, move to these nodes and then execute this attack. It allows her some really, really cool combos. Transistor story, beyond what I've said, is hard to talk about without giving too much away, but this is an emotional ride. It's a sad game. You are figuring out where all your friends and family have gone to. You're alone in a world with a sword that talks, and that's all you get, as at least in the beginning. The game does fill in the blanks, and you get more and more information about what happened and it's grim <laughs> but man is it good and the soundtrack really lifts up how good the game is it makes it even more impactful and more emotional in these scenes where you're getting that backstory and finding out what happened and why everyone is gone where they went and you do get to find out where everybody's at, which I like in a video game. I don't like being left to my own devices. I need it punctuated with a period at the end for me to be satisfied. <laughs> um, and Transistor does that. And it does it quickly. This is not a long game, but it feels like it is because this is another one that has stuck with me for a long time. And if you've gone this long without playing Transistor, I'm jealous. Because that means you get to experience this game for the first time, where I can't. You can't have the first experience back. And it's magical. And it's depressing. And it's sad. And it's wonderful all wrapped together. Other video games should look to Transistor as a sterling example of how to do things right. Please, please play this one. And that was my list of five games that I feel you should pick up from the PlayStation Essential Sale. Uh, this video took a lot longer to make than I thought it would. Um, so if you're still here at the end, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. Uh, dropping a comment as well would be helpful. I crossed over 50 subs recently, which was uh, pretty cool. Um, I'm actually almost to 60 now, which is very exciting. I would love to get to a thousand so I could monetize this channel. So if you could just take the two seconds to hit the button, I'd appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.